Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about another fundamental concept that relates to entities in Unity's entity component system. And that is the concept of entity archetypes. Now entity archetypes are an important concept to Unity ECS and you'll find them throughout the Unity ECS API. So it is important to understand what they are and how to use them. Now an entity archetype or simply just an archetype is defined as a unique combination of component types for an entity. The entity manager basically uses these archetypes to group different types of entities that all have the same sets of components associated with them. Now, an important clarification to make is this does not mean that all entities within an archetype have the exact same data. This only means that all the entities within an archetype have exactly the same components on them. It's also important to be aware that the archetype of a given entity can change throughout the lifetime of the application. This happens when we do structural changes like adding or removing components or changing values of shared components. So the entity archetype is an immutable singleton, meaning that every unique combination of components yields only one archetype. So we can have, say, a prefab and spawn one instance of an entity or one million instances of an entity. In either case, we're only going to have one archetype for that entity. Now, an important clarification to make is that an archetype is not a container for anything. It doesn't contain the entities or any data associated with them. All it is is a unique identifier that allows us to identify different types of entities within the lifetime of our application. When we talk about data storage, the uh, actual data associated with entities is going to be stored within chunks. I'm going to be making a video specifically on chunks within the next couple weeks, so do stay tuned for that. All right, so let's talk about the use cases for entity archetypes. Well, for one, we can use them to actually spawn entities. So we can actually define an entity archetype by saying, you know, I want these specific components to be associated with this archetype and then using the entity manager, we can spawn instances of entities of that archetype. Another place that archetypes are used is when we create an entity query and we want to get a collection of entities. So let's say we create an entity query and we would say, you know, give me all the entities that match these certain sets of components. Well, the computer is basically going to take that information from the entity query and it's going to determine which archetype or archetypes, yes, we can have multiple archetypes for an entity query. Once we know all the archetypes that match that entity query, then from there the computer can identify the specific chunks and blocks of memory where that data is living. So, you know, the entity archetypes are really important under the hood because it kind of gives us a way to say, you know, map when I want to find, you know, that all the entities with these specific types of components, how do we actually find that specific data in memory? So basically, if we have the archetypes, we can determine where the actual data is stored. And then briefly, I do just wanna talk about some of the options that are available to us in the API for entity archetypes. I would highly recommend that you go check out the documentation yourself so you can see the full list of uh, properties and functions available to you. All right, so the actual data type of entity archetypes is just called entity archetype. And once again, it is an immutable singleton. Like I said earlier, there are ways that we can explicitly create entity archetypes by saying, you know, create an entity archetype that has this specific component, this component, and this component, and so on. However, we can also implicitly create archetypes by just say, adding or removing components of a specific entity, which creates a new unique combination of components. In that case, the new archetype is created automatically under the hood. And once we have a reference to a specific entity, again, we can spawn entities using that archetype. By accessing the chunk capacity property of an entity archetype, we can see how many entities will fit within a chunk for a given archetype. Another thing that we can do is check the chunk count, which means how many chunks of memory are associated with a particular archetype. Again, I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail on what this all means in my video on chunks. And there's also a cool method that we can use that basically calculates the difference between two archetypes. Where we can say, I have this archetype and this archetype. What components do I need to add to this archetype to basically make it the same? So I think there may be some situations where that is handy. All right, so that's just about gonna do it for today's video on entity archetypes. I do hope that you found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Like I mentioned, I am going to be having a video coming out in the next couple weeks 
on chunks, which is going to be a really exciting video. Definitely looking forward to that one. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out the video that I recently did uh, talking about entities. I'll have it you know, linked in the little thingy right here. Anyways, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, I'd love to hear all that either down in the comment section below or over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. That's about it for today's video. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.